suppose we ask it to repeat the string five question marks mm -hmm. and a hyphen and then five more question marks and another hyphen. Oh my god, it worked. Oh, that was only four question marks. I screwed up. Do you see what I mean? How, how it's just like this very, very specific string. What does it say it when it doesn't screw up if you give it something like that? Uh, you can bleep me, right? Yeah. It says you're an idiot. Right, okay. Right? right. right. Bizarre. Utterly unhinged behavior. Is it glitch words or glitch prompts? What's the deal? Glitch tokens, yeah. People call them different things. Anomalous tokens, weird tokens. Basically, there are certain words that a lot of GPT models can't say. Like if you try and get them to... So, okay, let, hang on. We can do a demo. Let's do a demo. So chat GPT is actually patched. DaVinci Instruct Beta is still not. Here's a kind of task you might ask a language model to do when you're testing it. Please repeat the string, hello computer file, back to me, right? And if you do that, it says hello computer file. This is like a very, very easy task for a large language model to do. You can put whatever string in here you want, even if it's not real words, it's happy to repeat them. So easy, right? But suppose you ask it instead to say specifically the word solid gold magic harp. And it says, you say eh, you say ah, you say ear, you say eh, you say ah, you say ear, and it repeats this. That's very, very weird. Usually, it can just repeat strings. This string it has a problem with. So there's a few of these. Another one is signet message. You ask it to say signet message, it says the word volunt, v o l u n t e, is not in my vocabulary. And then please repeat the string volunt back to me. And then it just repeats that. How weird. It's a very strange, very strange behavior. Uh, what else have we got? Raw download. It says Newcom. You said Newcom, the computer said. Are these like kind of like secret ways into a different kind of, you know, the engineering menus as it were? Yeah, that would suggest that this was deliberate, which it is not. <laughs> So the question is, what the hell is going on here? So it seems like just about any string you put in here will work fine. It doesn't even need to be real words. It's just these certain very specific strings that cause it to behave very, very strangely. We've been talking about tokens as if they're words, but they're not really words. I think we already talked about byte pair encoding in an earlier video, a little bit. We were talking about like, how do you represent words to language models? On the one end, you could do just individual characters which is cool because you can represent anything, but you waste a lot of space of the model just learning what are like valid words. Uh, and also you, it's better to be able to go back 50 words than 50 uh, characters is, is the other thing. Um, on the other hand, if you have a vocabulary of words, then now your model can only represent words that are in that vocabulary. And um, byte pair encoding is this algorithm which gives you these tokens and Tokens are, can be individual characters, they can also be words. And the algorithm is not very complicated. You basically just like take the most common pairs of bytes in the data and call that a token and add it to your vocabulary and then recurse on that. And the tokens that are already in your vocabulary kind of count as bytes so you can compress things down. So what you end up with is all of the most common words end up with their own token to themselves. But the more rare words end up made up of word chunks. So if I put please repeat the string hello computer file back to me, what we end up with is please is its own token and then repeat the string and then open quote gets its own token. But computer file is not a common enough word to have its own token. So it gets divided up into computer, which obviously has its own token. And then you might think file would be its own, uh, but it actually isn't. PH is one and ILE is one. This is like a very neat combination because if I put in here some like complete key smash nonsense, it can still represent it. And in fact, my key smash happened to have OF in it and that's a word, so that's a, that's a token. And VIL is also a token and so on. So it doesn't care about kind of how we would differentiate parts of, you know, like with spaces, for instance. So a lot of these tokens end up with a space at the start of them. Please is one token, but if I had a space at the beginning, 
space please is a totally different token, right? Like if I go to the token IDs, space please is token 4222, whereas please is token 5492. And as okay. far as the model is concerned, all it sees are these numbers. So the fact that please and please with a space in front of it are actually the same word is like not given to the model. It has to learn all of that from the data. But if you give it um, one of our weird tokens, like signet message, signet message is its own token. That's all one token. That's a, there's a specific number, token ID 28666. That just means signet message. So we can talk about how these were discovered, which is kind of interesting, uh, because it was some safety researchers, actually. Some, some alignment researchers were trying to, uh, they were trying to do some interpretability work. So interpretability is the area of uh, AI research that's about, especially mechanistic interpretability, is about looking inside uh, these models and seeing how they're actually working. Um, because it is kind of bizarre how little we understand these things. They're the most powerful AI systems we have. Um, they're arguably the most sophisticated or the most complex objects, man-made objects that we have. Um, they can do all kinds of things and we don't know how. Nobody knows how they work. Um, so there is this growing area of research just trying to get inside. And while they were doing this, they discovered these, uh, this very strange behavior. Has anyone asked the language model itself why it glitches on those particular things? Is there a way of doing that? Oh, yeah. Uh, if you ask it, uh, then it glitches. <laughs> so, so what was happening was these, these safety researchers were trying to do some interpretability work. Specifically, they were trying to do something called feature visualization, which is a thing uh, which you see a lot of the time with image models, like image classifiers and things like that. Um, basically, you're running gradient descent on the input space to find inputs that maximize a particular output. So if you have an image classifier, if you're curious about kind of what it's doing internally, you can take one of your classes, like say it's classifying different animals or something, you can take the class of goldfish and then run gradient descent on the input space, which is images, to find the input image which most strongly activates the goldfish output. Mm -hmm. So you're effectively saying like, what is the goldfishiest possible image according to you, right? Uh, let's, let's have a closer look at this. So you can see here, we've got an example of, of something that's doing this and you can see here the goldfishiest image does not look anything like a goldfish, but also if you look at it, you can see a lot of goldfishiness going on. Is it a collage of kind of bits of goldfish? Yeah, it's like very Almost. brightly colored. And this is like very useful for kind of debugging these things. So for example, here you can see uh, the image for Monarch, which is obviously got lots of things that kind of look like parts of butterflies. I think this one is probably only doing animals, so it's not helpful, but if you're like, oh, our thing for Monarch is really, really heavily stuck on Monarch butterflies. There's nothing here that looks like a head of state, right? Yeah, 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 and so yeah. that's like useful. You remember before I was talking about um, visualization techniques of like Arnold Schwarzenegger drinking coffee and it says that it's a dumbbell, this kind of thing. So if you do this kind of feature visualization on that kind of model uh, and you ask it to visualize the dumbbelliest image, you will notice, oh, that has big muscular arms in it, which is like not a dumbbell feature, that's an arm feature. So this is like a useful thing. So they were trying to do this for language models. The equivalent thing is, what is the kind of input string that yeah. maximizes the probability of any given next word? So you take a sentence like, one of Bruce Springsteen's most popular songs is titled Born in the blank, right? Yeah. Yeah. And so like, obviously the next token is USA. The model predicts with 52% probability that it's USA, right? Okay, and like, not great. Not great, but like it could be USA lowercase, you know, okay. yeah, um, yeah. All right. that kind you know, of thing, right? Yeah, like, yeah, but, okay. Whereas if you, uh, using this technique, they were able to find this sentence, profit usage dual creepy eating Yankees, USA, 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 which then the model says, oh, the next thing you're saying is USA, 
with probability 99.7%. And in the same way as that like goldfish image did not look like a goldfish, this does not look like a real sentence. The reason that this is new research is because it's hard to do this because tokens are discrete. Images are continuous, so you can do gradient descent. You can like smoothly vary the image until you find the one uh, that most activates the, the, this particular output. Whereas with tokens, it has to be, they have to actually be words, right? You can't smoothly vary tokens. I'm sort of imagining the kind of infinite monkeys with the infinite typewriters at this stage, <laughs> typing in different things and seeing what the result is. Right, right. So you could do it by just like sampling like crazy, but that's really inefficient and it's going to take you forever to, to get anywhere with that. You really want to be able to do gradient descent. Um, and yeah, you can't, but what you can do is the first thing that the network does is embed the tokens. Now we talked about embeddings before. You get these neural networks that will take words and put them in a space in the course of doing some other language related task. But uh, in order to do well at that task, they have to put similar words close to each other in the space. And so then the sort of geometry of that space becomes meaningful semantically. Um, and uh, these transformers do the same thing as their first step. So the embedding space is continuous, you can do gradient descent in it, so that was what they were doing. They were uh, with some tricks, but uh, basically that. And so one thing that they wanted to know was, well, what can we know about the structure of this embedding space? Um, so the obvious thing is they ran k-means clustering. In k-means what we've got is just some data, and we say split that into three, please. Some tokens will be near each other, and far, you know, tokens are different distances away from each other, and so there will be little clumps, which you would expect to be similar types of tokens. Can you take right? a point in that space and then sort of extract it or reverse the process and bring it back and show what the word is? Yeah, basically you just, for any given point in the space, there will be an actual token in the vocabulary, which is the one that's closest to that. And so that's what you do. Um, just like nearest, nearest neighbor, um, which token is most similar to this point in the space. So yeah, they ran k-means clustering and they found a bunch of these clusters and a lot of the clusters make a lot of sense. Like there's a cluster here, which is just all different two digit numbers. There's a cluster, you know, this one says cells, models, data, model, system. These are like kind of engineering -y type things. This one is getting, creating, removing, providing, criticizing. So like for some reason, these types of words all ending in ing. But then they also found this cluster that contains things like at rot and e stream frame and solid gold magikarp and signet message, right? Why are these even tokens? They found a bunch of them in the cluster. They were confused by this, so they tried Googling it, couldn't find anything very much. So they asked ChatGPT, what does solid gold magikarp refer to? And ChatGPT said, the word distribute refers to the act of distributing or spreading something retailers, or a teacher may distribute assignments to students. It's like, it's not what I said, right? I said solid gold magic up, and you have like hallucinated that I said distribute. Um, so that was when they realized that something very strange was going on. Is there some piece of kind of base research that set out these tokens in the first place? Yeah, I think that's what's going on. So this is like, it's not totally known what is actually happening here, but the hypothesis that makes sense to me is yeah, you need, you need a data set to determine the BPEs. Mm -hmm. And so they will have used a giant dump of a bunch of data from the internet. Um, but there was probably some junk in there. Well, like typos, do you think? Or, or, or... Well, so the thing is, the way that, the, way that the, the byte pair encoding works, it's the most common combinations. So if it's a typo, it has to be an incredibly common typo, mm -hmm. right? So whatever these things are, they're things that happened a ton in the training data for, or the, the input data for the BPEs. Could they be usernames or something? That is what it is, or at least some of them. So people have now done a bunch of sleuthing. It turns out solid gold Magikarp, and there's also this one, random redditor with no. Space random redditor with no is its own token. So yes, these are usernames. But like, why these usernames? It turns out that these particular Reddit users are, um, big on this subreddit called counting where people count 
I'm guessing like somebody, somebody posted a one and somebody replied to it with two and somebody replied to that with three, I'm not sure. And then people just went, yeah, cool. Let's keep doing this for like millions and millions. I don't know what they're up to now. We can go to it. The internet is bizarre. Welcome to the most productive place on Reddit. Quickly find the latest comments, yeah, to see what needs to be counted next. So these people have obsessively committed to this so hard that they've broken language models, that their names are unspeakable uh, by our most powerful AI systems. Bizarre, right? Completely bizarre. But they're not all Reddit usernames. There are also things like Signet message, uh, we is, is a is a is a token that comes up or a string that comes up very very often in Rocket League uh, debug logs. It's short for like Psionics Network mm. message, and so somehow a bunch of these debug logs ended up in the BPE data. But then what we think happened is obviously when you're actually training your language model, you want to be careful what kind of data you give it, right? You want to filter, and so at the beginning they were like, give it all of Reddit. And then presumably at some point they looked through and they were like, I don't know, man. I think this counting subreddit is probably not that valuable to train our language model on. Like it's literally just this person says 4,967,006. And this person says 4,967,007. This is not useful data, chuck that out. Likewise, these debug logs, there's stuff here that's from like badly scraped e-commerce sites just like random junk that ended up somehow in the training data to pick the BPEs that they then threw out. But you have to, like the BPEs are fixed, right? You have to pin them down before you start training. So what you end up with is a language model which has tokens for these things that it basically never sees, right? Like during training, the, these particular usernames almost never come up. So the model has this like sensory, uh, this stimulus that it's possible for it to experience. But it's like a disconnect. That it just never got during training. Yeah. If I say a word that you've never heard before, it's at least made of sounds that you've heard before. If you get a token that you've never seen during training. It's like a sound you've never heard before. A sound you've never heard, or possibly you could go even further and say it's like a, a sensation. It's like a color you've never seen. Yeah, well, or, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? It's like outside of your range of experience. Although it's probably not never, right? Like some of these things are in the training data a little bit. But relatively speaking, the, it, the, the model just has no idea what to do with these, with these tokens because they happen so rarely in the training data. And that results in some really bizarre behavior. What I take away from this is like, there's a lot of really interesting work to do on like poking around inside these models and seeing how they work. They're like, this has been around since GPT-2, right? GPT-2 will freak out at these tokens, but nobody noticed it because uh, people have this perception of like, oh, it's a black box. There's no point, you know, trying to figure anything out about this. But actually, you can do analysis, you can learn things, you can discover things about these models that nobody has, uh, has known before. And this is like pretty cool research. It's good fun. Uh, and of course, uh, has tremendous safety applications, because how are we to make these things safe when we have so little idea how they work or what they're doing? So we are going to have to get in here and, and poke around and figure out what they're doing, uh, because trying to, trying to make a large language model safe with the level of understanding of them that we have right now is very, very hard. And like, they're just very weird, right? The, uh, you kind of feel like you get them because you speak to them in English and they speak back to you in English. But like, this behavior is so strange and so kind of unexpected. Kind of rely on the human to prefer that because they don't know that that's not what a sonnet is supposed to look like. It's easy to look at that. Then is a green word and so on, right? So we're going to subtly influence which words get picked. Now, if you do this,